Hey everyone, it's James, and Steph would kill me for saying this because we're the fit RV and all, but I really love ice cream sandwiches. Hey everyone, and welcome to this video, which is all about ice cream sandwiches. <laughs> I don't know what this video is about, but luckily I'm gonna be behind the camera most of the time because I think we maybe are gonna need a barrier for this one between us. Who will clean up the blood? Um, yeah. Anyway, the reason why this is all about ice cream sandwiches is because I do like ice cream sandwiches and that was kind of the straw that broke the fridge's back. So we're gonna be installing a new Novacool fridge. Well, we hope you'll be installing we a hope. new Nova Cool fridge. We hope I'll be installing it. In this video, by the way, this is going to be like our Oscar nominated video because we're going to have drama. We're going to have action. We're going to have suspense. We're going to have what? a cautionary tale. Maybe we'll have all of these. You told me that theoretically it's going to fit into the sp space that's already in there. Theoretically. Um, so it may fit. It may <laughs> not. Um, anyway, why are we doing it? Why are we replacing the fridge? Well, the ice cream sandwiches actually is kind of a thing. You ever try to bite into an ice cream sandwich where the ice cream is not frozen as solid as the cookie? You get this all over your face and it's... Well, real. the freezer. So we've had a uh, Nova Cool before in Lance. You all might remember James replaced mm -hmm. the fridge in that one with a Nova Cool and it had two compressors so we could set the temperature separately in the freezer from the fridge part, and we got a little spoiled with that. We got ice cream sandwiches with that because <laughs> with our, it's hard to go backwards. Yeah. Like and so with our current fridge, if we set it cold enough in the freezer so that the ice cream sandwiches are good and solid, then our lettuce freezes. And yeah. if we set it so the lettuce doesn't freeze, well, then you get mushy ice cream sandwiches, and that's no yeah. fun. So, and then there's also the space issue, too, with yes. the current freezer. So in our Echo now, the freezer is so small that we have to prioritize what comes with us. So ice cream sandwiches do not come with us because we need the room for vegetables. Because you're fruit. evil. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> so this one is, so somehow they managed to get more, I took notes. Okay. Somehow they managed to get more fridge in the same space. So I don't know if they do that with a rift in the space-time continuum or what, <laughs> because our old fridge, the Norcold 2152, okay. 5.3 total cubic feet, mm -hmm. and 0 0.6 of that is freezer space. Yeah, this fridge, small. same size cutout, roughly, 6.8 total cubic feet right. of the whole thing, and 1.7 of that is freezer. So more than twice as much, wow. almost three times as much freezer space wow. in this as we have in the Norcold. So that's great. This is going to rock for that. Yeah. And like she said, it has two compressors. The other thing, reason we're doing this is because you can get something out of the freezer. This has got a drawer freezer, right? Yes. And you can get something out of the freezer that way without needing three hands. Because yeah. if you're parked slightly on level, you'll need one hand to hold the refrigerator door open with our current fridge. Another hand to pull down the thing for the freezer thing. And remember, it's like up above your head. Yeah. And then with your third hand, you can get the thing out of the freezer that you actually wanted. Yeah, it's, it's not ideal having the freezer so high up. So we're going to really like having it low down in the drawer feature. Yeah, but as we've alluded to, this will not be without some challenges. And there are a number of challenges that I have identified. This will either be an easy appliance swap or a complete rebuild of the whole yeah. passenger side of the RV. Yeah, we don't know. I hope it's going to be easy because we have a trip. We're leaving in like a week. So fingers crossed that this is going to go easy. <laughs> It'll be one vid video, bam and done. We're on the road. <laughs> sure. <laughs> It'll go easy. <laughs> anyway, so let's head out to the RV. You get behind the camera and Sweet. I'll start talking to you about some of these challenges. Good luck. You got this, babe. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the challenges that I'm going to face getting this thing in there. Challenge number one is the width. Now, nominally, this is 16 and just over a half inches wide. Depth, we're fine. We got plenty of depth back to the wall. And height, we're fine. The height is actually not much. It's about the same as this. It's width I'm very concerned about. This is 16 and just over a half, or in, if you looked at a Winnebago design document, it would probably say 420 millimeters. So, this fridge, if you measure it, in, 
It's down to the jiggle. You know on the end of a tape measure how the, the end will like jiggle this much? It's down to in that tolerance of space if this will fit. So in some places I can measure this and it's 420 millimeters, right? But then in some spaces I measure it and it's 421. And then there's this flange up here at the front. You see this flange this is the mounting flange and it's a little thicker here, right? That's another 16th of an inch. And then there are these screw heads in there. That's another two millimeters on top of that millimeter on top of the already wondered if it was gonna fit millimeters. So what am I gonna do about that? Well, a couple things. First, I'm going to, you're gonna laugh because you're gonna think it's silly, but it's actually down to this much space. I'm going to remove these mounting screws. That's going to save me two millimeters, two, more than two millimeters for each screw head I can get out of there. So that's four millimeters. That's like three thirty seconds of an inch in width. I'm going to replace them with aluminum pop rivets. So I've already done one down here on the bottom right here. You can see there, that's what I've replaced it with. That's the aluminum pop rivet. There's the original screw. Clearly I've saved some width there. Now, I have concerns in doing these because the head of my little pop rivet tool might not be able to get in there tight enough to pull that rivet tight. If that doesn't work, I have a backup plan for that. And I've bought some regular screws that have just even flatter heads than what I have in there. It won't quite save me as much as a pop rivet, but it'll still save me some space. So that's how I'm going to pick up space on the width. Next is actually getting the fridge into place. Now, I understand now why when they build these things, they put all the appliances in first and put the walls on last. That would be a much easier way to go about this. But I'm gonna have to go in through the door. I've checked the width all along the way, so it'll fit through the door. The door is 22 inches wide. That's not gonna be a problem. But then the absolute narrowest spot on the path to the fridge is right here. And this is only 21 inches wide, right there, roughly. And then once I get back here, it opens up a bit more. So one of the things I've decided I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this bathroom door, just take it completely off the hinges so that I can have access to this space so that like if I try to bend down to pick up the fridge, my butt has some place to go. That's one thing, but there's more. So let's head inside for that. So if I preemptively remove the door to the fridge, then I'm down to 19 inches and I should make it past that choke point there in, in the aisleway. So that's one thing I'm gonna, to actually physically move the fridge. I don't know if you can see down here towards the floor. It's on kind of a piece of cardboard. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line the floor of the van with cardboard and then just kind of slide cardboard over cardboard and just shimmy the fridge back there until it's time for me to pick the thing up. The other thing, as far as picking it up, come around front. With the door off, I've got this I can lift. I can remove this drawer. This drawer comes out. So I can just, that'll make it lighter and easier to grab. I can just, you know, pick it up that way. That'll make it much easier for me to get into place. So physically getting it into place, I think I'll be able to handle mostly by removing the door and with creative use of the cardboard and the giant packing box that it came in, which I'm going to line the floor with so that I've got a slick cardboard ramp back to the fridge spot. Okay, not really much of a challenge is electrical. Come around to the front of the fridge here. So as we mentioned before, this fridge has two compressors. You can see them both here, right? There's one for the, which one is this? I don't know if this is the fridge or the freezer. Any, I'll figure that out later. It's got two compressors, right? So in theory, that's up to twice as much current demand as the current fridge. So I may have to run a new, uh, a new set of wires and a new fuse. I, I don't know where that fridge is fused in. So I may have to set up a new circuit in order to power this fridge. Fortunately, the refrigerator is literally four inches above the fuse panel. <laughs> so finding access, and this is open underneath here, finding access and a spot, I've got empty spots on my fuse panel, running another 15 amp circuit, that's what they recommend is a 15 amp breaker. That's not gonna be a challenge at all. So today, um, since I'm working this, you know, after work and, and whatever, 
today, goals for today are to prep the fridge, just remove those screws, take off the doors, that kind of thing, you know, put in the pop rivets if I can. That's number one. Number two, if I can, if I have time, pull this fridge and then see what I got underneath here that I'm going to have to remediate. And then we'll go from there, depending on what I find. So that's, that's the goal for today. Modest goals. So let's get to it. He's not actually performing any part of this project, right? Oh yeah. That's not gonna be a problem. Okay. There we go. Looks like I can. Most useful screwdriver I own. Anyway, I thought this might be an interesting comparison for folks. Um, seems like a lot more space in this one. This one's narrower and dirtier. Um, and then this really, the double insulation up in there really cuts out, cuts down on the amount of space that's, that's available. But. Pretty, but that'll hold the things in place. All right, breakers back on. We have power. So I've run the circuit. This will occupy fuse spot number two, which weirdly was un, uh, unoccupied. Spot number two there. Um, 14 gauge wire, which should hold the 15 amps. There's just no fuse in it because, you know, we're going to work on it with it, not live. Insane. Here goes nothing. So, 
There's a bracket holding a metal frame on the microwave that is screwed into the wall on the fridge. The screw is protruding a quarter inch into the fridge space. I thought it was high enough up it wouldn't block it. I was wrong. It is hot. <clears throat> so, it will not go any further. There's just no, no pushing it in. Further. Although, I, I do like it. Okay, welcome to day two after a disappointing day one. It was disappointing to get so close to be able to get that fridge in there and then not be able to drive it home. So this new fridge vents in a different manner from the old one. The old one vented largely by convection, drawing in air from the bottom and releasing it out the top. New fridge blows air out the bottom. And so rather than just let it pull air in from the top of its own accord, I'm going to cut a vent hole in the, uh, so that's what the 3D printer is, is going right now. And it's printing a vent cover that'll cover up. I'm just going to drill a hole. I have a two and seven eighths inch Forstner bit, and it just seems a lot easier to make a round hole than a square one. So I'm going to drill a hole into the galley cabinet underneath the sink and let it pull in some air there and then blow it out the front. <laughs> Double whammy, I'm already bleeding from what I don't know. <laughs> and uh, uh, uh. <laughs> That's awesome, all right. Yeah, so still not enough. So this has got to come back out. Yay. And it's still awfully tight. I attacked this with a hammer and chisel and brought that two inches higher. So no, that won't catch. Well, I got that part. I don't have the bottom. Just won't go this last little bit. I have this power cleaner, which I don't use much because it's not a very delicate tool, but it, uh, it, it works quickly. So we're gonna give this a try and I'm just gonna and hopefully that, uh, that works. Both thumbs now. Ugh. All right, so first, I would like to point out that it's 105 degrees in here. <laughs> this illustrates the depths of depravity that I am going to to make this work. Next, if this doesn't work, I don't know what to do at this point, except I will have to just move a wall because I've taken a sixteenth of an inch 
off each of these walls. We're in here and the wall's not nearly bowed. Maybe a tiny, tiny bit bowed out a little, but we're in. That's, that's what it should look like. However, over here, we're, we've got a quarter inch gap. So all I can conclude from that is that the fridge opening is not square. An eighth of an inch gap now instead of a quarter. Okay, so I started off with the router making nice, neat channels. That's long gone. <laughs> um, and then I moved to things like a power planer and, and a belt sander with 36 grit sandpaper. And even this random orbit sander to get into some spots where I've got 40 grit on that. I even had to use this, which is like my old Stanley number 93 bullnose rabbiting plane, it's even a chisel plane if you take the take the nose piece off, um, to actually get close to the bottom and into corners and stuff, all to just remove material. In the end, I wound up removing probably like, it would be better if the walls were an eighth of an inch thinner on either side, but here's where we are. It's in. And the safety chain is on the top. I can feel it right there. That's in, so it's in, it's secure. The wiring is ready to be run. So all that remains now is to anchor this in. There are one, two, three, four holes to anchor this in. They're going into the edge of the plywood, which is now only a half inch thick. So very important to pre-drill for these holes because I don't want to just shatter that plywood. Although. This thing is tight enough, I think we could roll the RV and everything else would fall apart, but this would stay wedged into this spot. Um, so need to pre-drill, put in the mounting screws, plug it up, get my bloody handprints out of the inside of the fridge. And then uh, we can work about putting the doors on, wiring up the electrical and putting the trim panel on the bottom. So drilling uh, for number eight the screws. Miracle of miracles, it's in. And there's even a little bit of space that the screws seem to have pulled tight. It was here due to the uneven cabinet. I don't know how that worked. I'm just glad it did. We're calling it in. We're calling it good. All right, so I've got actually two sets of wire. One for the fridge we figured out is on the left and the freezer is on the right. And make sure these connections are all still in. They didn't get messed up while I was brutalizing the fridge for 14 attempts at putting it in. Um, anyway, so the easiest way for me to connect that up is gonna be with these little Wago connectors because I've got one, one connection in, so I'll just uh, put all three of the reds, all three of the blacks, or red, red, yellow, and black, black, white. We'll wire it up that way and uh, then put in a fuse. Brought a fuse, be there. And then it should light up. <sighs> Go. We got a light. Oh, we got compressors coming on. Which one is that? All right, so they give you these little plugs. To plug these screw holes. You can't see them. And they just kind of pop in like that. Here we go. I think 
That's it. Fridge. Nice. Freezer. Beyond nice. And we're back. We've been on a three week trip with the new fridge freezer. And so we've got some experience now we can tell you how we liked it. But first, before we went on that three week trip, we had a little fun with the door panels here. So we replaced the stainless panels that came with, with what became magnetic dry erase fridge panels. And we made a little video, like a vertical format video. You can find it on our social media that shows you how to do that. And do go watch it because you can probably do it with the fridge you have now. You don't necessarily have to have this fridge to do that. Anyway, so we've been on a three week trip how successful of an upgrade was this? Well, first let's talk about the ice cream sandwich problem. Um, since this is our first trip with this fridge, I was keeping a close eye on the temperatures with the little monitor here. It's kind of hot right now. Um, and at one point I saw the freezer had gotten down to minus eight. And while the freezer was at minus eight, the fridge was at a comfortable 38. So we had way good ice cream sandwiches while not frozen lettuce. So massive success there. Thumbs up for the Nova Cool. Um, the second issue was like space. How much space did we have? We had so much space. We brought along stuff we never even ate and didn't care that we had stuff in the fridge that was taken up space. We even stocked up on when we found something that we liked. We'd get like more than one of it just because we had the room to do it. It was way cool. Now, did it use any more electricity than, than the previous fridge? Maybe, but when I, you know, remember we have a large battery bank, so, you know, temper your, your expectations. But when I would check in the mornings, you know, after waking up to see sort of how much battery we had, you know, what, what our state of charge was, it wasn't anything off of what I expected. So I think it was fine as far as battery usage. Um, was it easier to access? Well, duh, right? Of course, this is going to be easier to access than that comical kind of freezer thing we had up there. And finally, for those of you who wouldn't believe me if I didn't show you, this bathroom door does in fact open without hitting the fridge door. So we haven't created a, a movement problem here. Now, as far as installing the fridge, so anyway, massive thumbs up for the Novacool. This thing just rocked it here and back. So as far as installing it, now in an Echo, which is what we installed it in here, can you install it? Well, you just watched a video where I did it. So yes, you can. Are you going to enjoy installing it? No, no, you will not enjoy installing it in an Echo, but it can be done. So now that you know what's sort of involved, you have to kind of decide how badly do you want ice cream sandwiches. For me, this was worth it because now there's ice cream sandwiches. In other RVs where you had a little bit more space, this is a slam dunk. There was, there was nothing difficult to installing this except making the room in the Echo. So massive thumbs up for this fridge freezer. In an Echo, you can do it. You got to want it. In another RV, if you can do it, go for it. Highly recommended. Okay. Um, if you have questions, comments, whatever, there will be a post on thefitrv.com that will be linked in the YouTube description just down below. Click on over to the Fit RV and then you can ask questions, comments there, and I will try my best to get them answered. That's going to do it for now. We'll see you later, and I'll be having ice cream sandwiches. Goodbye. I did that wrong. I'm supposed to bend over, let that door open, and then jump up and jab it into my back. That's how it's supposed to go. Sorry, I messed that up.